This is the full driving review of the Mercedes GLE and here in Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars, we're going to take a look at the dancing GLE, this lowrider style. We'll tell you all about this new technology and of course in general about the exterior, the interior and the driving experience comparing to the predecessor and also comparing to some of the competitors on the market. I can promise you it will be a very interesting review. I can already tell you right now, it's one of the most interesting cars I have driven recently. Why? Let's find out together in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. So welcome here today to Texas, very fitting for this vehicle for sure and well it's built not here in Texas but in Tuscaloosa, Alabama together with the GLS that will also be basically the same vehicle just a little bit longer than for the third seating row to have a little bit more room for that then. Well in the front you can see this is the standard grille with this dual fin design. You can also get the AMG line exterior then you will have this dot structure you can see that, for example, also with our car we had at the Paris Motor Show. Then it starts with LED headlamps. This one here is the multi-beam LED, so for 650 meters of high beam range. And two, let's say, C signatures for the daytime running light. This is same as for the E-Class sedan. Here also signalizes the E in the GLE. The color here is Hyacinth Red. But we also have some other colors for you, for example, this obsidian black. And there are some other colors which sometimes look also very dark, but have a color tone in it. For example, this emerald green it looks a little bit brighter in a bright light then as well. Same, we also have two blue tones here already to show you. The one is Kevin's side blue, but also a brilliant blue. That would come close to a Thomas Blue, which I really would prefer. But also a Designio Diamond White Bright also does fit to the car. We also had that in a static Paris Motor Show episode. But of course, our red car here today is also really attractive as it is a rather bright color. Or what about rather a silver or more gray style? Which one would you pick? The length is 4 meters 92 or 16 foot 1. That is about 10 centimeters longer than the predecessor or 8 centimeters longer in the wheelbase. Let's see how that one plays out for the interior. You can see you can either get those crossover wheel arches, standard one, or if you go for the AMG line exterior pack, by the way, interior and exterior AMG, you can pick that freely, it's not connected. Then with the AMG, it is in vehicle color. 18 to 22 inch rims. Those ones here are 21 inch rims. So almost the biggest ones and they look surely massive already. Then this sidestep, you do not have to get it. It looks also pretty cool for getting in and out. You can argue for and against it, I think. Then what is really significant, there's nothing special here in the side profile. It's pretty much upright. This goes for the visibility. This C-pillar here has this typical GLE or before that the M-Class shape. They stick to that and this gives the car also a you know, pretty unique design feeling. And suspension-wise, this is the most interesting aspect about this car probably. It starts with a base suspension, base steel suspension. Then you can pop up the air suspension, the normal air suspension. And then based on that, there's the new e-active body control. They have the air suspension plus a hydro pneumatic system and they can also move one individual wheel. It's pretty interesting to see that then from the exterior. Also interesting to experience it from the interior. And this enables a lot of different functions. For example, a curve function that it leans inside the corner. 
but also that is also pretty cool to see when you're for example off-road then the car starts hopping a little bit when you're for example in loose sand and then you start driving and the car can basically get out of the loose sand by that and if you activate a show program that one is not available the other ones we shown you before with the red car that is all available but then the white car now this is a pure show program that is not available they just programmed it but you can see you can also use it as a low rider then just for fun let me also show you different driving modes and stuff and one of them is also off-road then the car is getting pumped higher and then you can use those special functions when you then use the suspension button you get to the free driving assistant or to the individual wheel control this is very interesting because then you can really for example put the car on the right all the way up and all the way down on the left I hope you can also see that now from the inside on camera you've seen it from the outside now pretty pretty much um, now if we switch that around here also left side to the other side again it's really interesting you know and then for example if you lost some traction on one wheel and then want to put it down or up to face the next obstacle um, well I'm not sure who will actually do that in real time or in real life but it's possible <laughs> let's take it that way then the free driving assistant this one is then how it you know shakes free basically and then you can start and also drive slowly while that and now the car is going like this you can also maybe see it from the inside it's really funny feeling and then for example you can also get over we have some you know some a sand barrier here now where it was a little bit loose and now we can also get over the sand barrier a little bit easier and it also works when you're driving back this of course just a showcase here um, this will make more sense when you are in a real dune situation or so in the rear the car in the new generation looks a little bit sleeker due to those new tail lamps with the led daytime running light signature and i think you can really do that horizontal shape by the way michigan number plate because mercedes has their importer organization for the us player um, so that's pretty lucky for us because we don't need a front number plate which always looks better than well in the lower part this is of course always a lot of discussion here uh, at autogefuel with the fake exhaust the real exhaust is underneath the car designers do that to have more design freedom in the rear but a lot of the customers also want an honest design so you can always argue pro and against that for sure and by the way you also can still get an off-road gear reduction if you want a really hard off-road use. If you then combine the off-road gear reduction with the e-active body control, that should make a very off-road capable car. I hope we'll also have a chance to do that at the later stage to um, get it maybe in some hard off-road or sand situations because there are already some competitions people say, yeah, is it maybe even more off-road capable than a G-Class with all this technology inside? That will be clarified at the later stage. So what do we have under the hood? For the US exclusively there will be a 350 petrol engine, four cylinder with 300 horsepower. Then this one here is a six cylinder petrol engine, three liter of displacement, 367 horsepower with a mild hybrid system, 48 volt board net. So a little bit bigger battery for recuperation and all the, for example, the e-active body control. So this is here needed, the six cylinder 48 volt board for the e-active body control. It will also be available for a six cylinder diesel. This then will be the 400D with 330 horsepower or the 350D with 272 horsepower. And there will also be a 300D a four cylinder with 245 horsepower so the diesel is primarily for europe the petrol especially the smaller petrol especially for the us and the 450 this is here basically the sofa top model but there will also be a v8 petrol later on including an amg variant the 63 probably interesting by the way do you see this one here rubber pads it seems that this should actually protect this area here from collecting leaves. Everyone knows that you open the hood and everything is full of leaves, especially in this area, but maybe this is protecting it. Looking forward at this, this one will work on long-term run. And last but not least, they are also planning to release a plug-in hybrid. 
supposed to have a pure electric range of 100 kilometers. Hmm. That's really true. We'll find out at the later stage. This is a nicely slim designed key. And of course, you have the keyless entry. You can close it, and also the mirror flips in, or your hand on the inside flips out, opens the vehicle. Option is also a soft close, like this. Let's do it once more. Here we go. For all doors, then. Then, inside of the doors, everything is very upright. It opens quite wide. Leather red cover, good quality, then a matte wood, really feels very well. You can adjust the seat right here, then memory, three, uh, three functions, then seat heating, seat cooling, and from here then, if you press this one and use this, you can control the co-driver seat. Optional 3D Burmester sound system, wow, what a sound, soon more to that. Galvanized window levers, so a top build quality. Instead of the doors, you have Actually, a lot of room also for putting bigger bottles. You open the trunk right there, also with the key, also uh, with the foot kick opening mechanism is working too. Then if you look at this new interior, you can see this is a black panel, one black big panel, two times 12.3 inch screens. We will soon give you another perspective on that. The steering wheel has the adaptive cruise control on the steering now, so you can have also the electric so controls here and also the heated steering wheel function is hidden here just behind the steering wheel you can only basically see it from here and not from the driver's perspective um, just under the shifting column then those seats here optional animal skin pack but mercedes is among the best next to tesla to offer also animal friendly materials so in germany for example you start then with the fabric on the inside and the leather red on the outside really cool best also for the summer and winter temperatures both then there's also an amg line interior is microfiber dynamica on the inside and leather red on the outside this is available for almost all markets and then in the us and also in European markets, you can get three different colors of full leather red seats, the so-called Artico or MB Tech seats, depending on the naming on the market, in three colors, either like this, like in, in, in beige, in espresso, a little bit brown, or in black. So three different leather red colors, microfiber choice and fabric choice for some of the European markets. So really good sustainable materials they are also offering and the comfort will be just the same. Getting inside is super easy, but somehow I think the sidestep here is rather annoying than helping me. It just looks a little bit fancy and the door opens very wide, as I said. And what a great comfortable seating position here. You sit upright, have the full SUV command driving position. Wow, and you can just relax in those seats. And as I said, the other seats will also have a very good comfort and you also have a new seat massage function in different functions we can show that in the infotainment system we've tested it already worked very well because it also goes really up high to the body you can also of course electronic adjust everything also the um, lower area here can make it longer or shorter for example and the steering wheel looks like this so you can find a good position one meters 86 or six foot one my height and this one the room above my head has a panoramic roof inbuilt here so if you don't have one uh, it would be even a little bit longer but you can see it's absolutely fine also with the panoramic roof even if you're tall interior overview top part also with the leather red cover then a very seamless integration of this dual screen and there you can see them how they are turned on this one here the right one is also touch 
can also use this lower pad here to zoom in and out, for example, in the map, but also to control everything right and left. Also with the right thumb here at the steering wheel, this is also possible, so redundant controls basically. And the left side, this is no touch, but you can use the left thumb then to control the functions, but also um, what is on the right side, for example, or on the left side. So a lot to do, you have to, you know, you can spend a lot of time controlling everything. Most of the stuff you won't really use, but I'll show you what are the most important stuff to use. Then the matte wood element here. Those vents here, some like them, some don't. They are, of course, you know, really huge as for the whole interior space. Still, you can control the temperature in a rather manual way. Nice clicking sound. That's good to just use that while driving, for example. Um, Turn the car on. I can also show you then. Yes, yes, yes. Always so many warning, warning sounds when you, for example, start the car not using seatbelt or whatever, or have the lights turned on and so on. So now the temperature is changing. Also with the voice control, for example, either activate it here at the steering wheel or say, "Hey Mercedes, how can I help you?" Set temperature to 72 degrees. I'm setting the temperature to 72 degrees. Yeah, for example, like this, or also then... Drive me to Houston. Let's see if the GPS will respond to that. I am starting route guidance to Houston. Yeah, that worked very well. Remember, it always has to do with the internet connection. When the internet connection is very good, it will work well here also with a live traffic situation then you can see um, you know where is it going and this is pretty helpful for sure so cool feature that you don't have to uh, type everything in while driving so in here you can see the traffic delay is seven minutes at the moment and then you can also see like if there's a route which is maybe marked red and you want to take something else or so you can zoom in and out like this then or also at the touchpad I've shown you earlier so this is both possible and this is how it looks like. It's really cool and it's helpful. And there's a special function with the augmented reality. So when you're approaching the next intersection, then you see it basically with the front view camera plus an augmented reality sign. That was really helpful. Cool to have that. It's a new feature. And I think here I learned to use it a little bit better now um, and how it's really helpful then, in, especially in city traffic situations where you don't really know where you're going exactly. Here then, for example, also mark then where is the traffic situation. Other than that, with the infotainment system here in the main menu, you can, um, this is here, the comfort fu function is really cool with the different seat massage. Is a, for driver and co-driver, of course, it's an option, but they are really cool to help you relax for sure. Then what is also, well, it's a little bit complicated to reach the CarPlay. Um, you have to go to smartphone then, and then you can get to the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. And um, I can also show that when I, when I plug in the phone. So I um, have it right here and I just need, well, in this case, because I got the normal Apple cable, but then I also need this adapter for the USB-C device. So, and then it's usually also coming quite quickly. Oh, there's Schmoozy. So now unlock. So here we go. There we are. So there we have it. And then by the way, this haptical feedback for the touchpad is not working anymore, but you can play your music and at the same time use the set nav from Mercedes. That would be also very important to me. And what is also pretty cool is the camera system. I start the engine for that, then go, yes, I don't have the seatbelt on. <laughs> so here we go with the camera system. When we put on the reverse gear, for example, we can see it. This is, you know, the fake drone view from above. And you can also pick different camera perspectives and everything is really crystal clear. It's, for example, also that you don't damage your rims, left and right screen, so really useful stuff. Those digital instruments, you can control them with the left 
thumb and then you can also have for example GPS information there, the trip information or also change some of the designs and have for example a more sporty look. This is possible to have that one then. Also with the GPS route in the middle. So you're pretty flexible with those digital gauges. Maybe also this progressive look. This one could also be and then you can again switch what one have in the middle, left or right. And the head-up display shows GPS information, a loud speed and the current speed and the projection field is really huge. I can, um, it looks so small on camera, believe me, it is even bigger. So now to the sound system, which is really amazing, the 3D sound. There's also some um, settings you can access right there. Here's the Burmester settings, but I just, just leave it as it is and I will do just fine because it's so amazing how surround dish it is. Wow. <laughs> amazing. From those speakers there, of course, but also inside and also at the rear of the part, uh, rear of the car is really absolutely cool. You can, by the way, also um, select a VIP seating area. So um, you can select one single seat and then it's basically for me or here then, um, for example, on the right side, you hear the difference or for the rear. Um, but I just like it, you know, when it's all around um, for all seats, you can also pick different sound profiles. For example, at the moment the 3D is selected. Surround is also cool. This is more echo alike, but 3D also more comes from the rear. So this is definitely my favorite setting and I think the best system on the market at the moment. Nice matte wood cover here also for the middle console. You can slide that one open like this. Then you have the inductive charging pad for your phone. Works like that. <laughs> Last time it was really funny because the cork cover here, which is actually pretty cool. People saying, oh, do you have a slice of bread in the car? <laughs> that was really funny. <laughs> now Holger has to laugh and shakes the camera. So uh, here, USB-C ports, this one to connect the smartphone, the other one just to charge it. They use USB-C because when Apple also goes USB-C, everyone is going USB-C then on the long-term run. Then adaptive cup holders right here, and they can be cooled and heated. So this is also a nice system, was there in the previous generation before though. Then this touchpad here is, for example, possible that you can use it while driving um, instead of just using the touch screen. The NAV G hotkey here, this one will be used quite often, I guess. This is just to put your hand here, but not that useful. Panic handle. <laughs> then you also have the air suspension control here or also the suspension control. Um, this one here for the special suspension features. This one here that to directly lift up the air suspension or down. Then you open this middle armrest like this. Well, you can, there's not so much room beneath that. You can put another smartphone there also with another USB-C charger. But you know, that's actually not that big. But I think overall you have enough cubby holes available. I really love this bright interior also with the ceiling but you can put even more light to the car when you open this shade. You see the panoramic roof really goes all over the vehicle and it takes a lot of time till the shade is open. Yeah I think we have to wait first. Now we go. So and then we can open it completely like this to leave some more fresh air and also look how wide it is actually. So let's see, yeah, that should be, yeah, that's the maximum. So pretty cool. Now to the rear. This is really interesting, I can promise you. First of all, the door opens quite wide. You can get in quite easily. I have the seat as I would be driving as a tall driver. So there's seven centimeters more leg room in this new generation if you compare it to the predecessor. And this rear bench is movable about 10 centimeters. At the moment, it's all the way back. This is better legroom, for example, than in the BMW X5. However, you also sit more leaned back. You can see it like this here. So um, you can also make it a little bit steeper. That's possible, but lean back, I mean the lower area. You can see here the pelvis is basically um, tilted backwards. 
I have read one comment where, where you said like, oh, I like to sit that way. I personally don't. I'm more like, you know, to sit like, like more upright, like in a chair. I think that's better for long-term comfort. Um, well, electronic controls is optional. Also, if you don't go for this um, 10 centimeters uh, movable bench, you are actually left with a fixed bench. So um, there's no manual control then or something here. You can put it forward like this. Even in the forward position, I could still sit here. That's very interesting. So then in this case, you also have more trunk area and you can even adjust the, um, the headrest here. The, you can see it right there. Uh, me electronic headrest control so pretty interesting system here and you're also flexible and well it's basically um like an executive seating but then again i don't like that this that seating bench goes backward then again this also gives you enough headroom so if you look here that's also okay in the rear also for tall people middle armrest Front, you have some cup holders. Isofix on the outside of the seats each to install the child seats. And then there's also another control. Let me just put in the ignition, put on the ignition. So here, now I had to turn on the engine that also the rear climate unit works. You can see, control everything here then. That's an option, of course. And in the lower part, another USB-C supply right there. Here, yeah, actually two. Here it looks like one. Now there's two. One, two, one, two. <laughs> Uma Simpson style. At least from my perspective. Come on. Then there's also another plug socket, also available. And you can see the middle tunnel is not that high that people can actually sit in the middle seat also quite properly. Yes, I still look weird when I'm here on the middle seat, but it's actually quite soft in the middle part and you can put your feet like this on the middle tunnel. That's not possible quite often. Of course, if they are, you know, it's always possible like this most of the time because people then will have their legs right here. So that will still work and also headroom wise. By the way, those mounts here are for the optional rear seat entertainment system. And then there's also the function from here from the rear area electric knob there's this one here that the seat can be folded up like this this one then will guarantee you an access if you have the optional third seating row which is not equipped with this vehicle but if you go for this option then you could enter the rear like this so let's open that hatch So here we go, 825 liters is the standard setup, up to 2,055 liters. And the standard length here is just a meter until the cover here, very well in the build quality too. Then replacement tire. This cover here does not have any rails. The reason is that there's also the possible uh, another seating row so this is of course a little wobbly right here don't like it that much then some light right there and let me just show you the width this is you know, just a little bit more than a meter it's like like a meter and mm, one meters ten is it in the width so and the height here until the cover well, height until the cover is 46 centimeters and then the height until the top part this is about 80 centimeters so on the right side you can see some small buttons and with those buttons here I can electrically first of all lower the car with the air suspension for the loading process that will be possible and then I push it right here and then the seat goes in the front, the co-driver seat also moves forward a little bit. The same is happening with those seats here. Unless you have the engine running, then this would not be working basically to protect the driver because when the engine running, it would think the car that the driver is still active somehow. So, and now what do you have in length? 
this is just two meters now this stick so it's almost two meters then up to the front seat and if I, you would use the middle part here to push through longer things it's not only two meters um, yeah it's like to the very front console it's two meters and 60 two meters 66 approximately like this so those were all the numbers if I put a backpack here inside there you can also see the dimensions so you can really very well use it 45 liters more by the way than the predecessor of course when you have the third seating row then the trunk will approximately end just like here so the third seating row of, seating row of course makes more sense if you have a GLS than later on which is basically let's say a long wheelbase GLE as in the current generations it's a good room to load vegetables. Yes, you can load a lot of vegetables in here. I think especially pumpkins since we're here in the US. And this is what equals the 2055 liters or 72 cubic feet in pumpkins. The tasty butternut. Here in this case also some that are not for eating. But if you think about it, this pile will be just in there. That's pretty impressive, right? So what about city driving and highway driving in the GLE? So I start up and almost hear nothing, so it's really silent. And we just start right here. I see this huge head-up display. This is of course helping me with the GPS, but especially with the speed. So the speed I'm currently driving and the speed I'm actually allowed to drive. In 200 feet at the traffic light this is inter right. interesting, so I right. had the sound still on for you and there you can see this information now with the augmented reality. So I have this street name of the next intersection right there and I also can see then, you know, what is it, you know, showing me that I have to turn right now. Of a mile. In this street, so I have the acoustic commands, then I have this augmented reality right there, and I also have the information in the head-up display, and I could also have it here in the digital instruments, so more <laughs> than GPS commands, wherever you like it, basically. I mean, it's it's good to have it in an um, you know in an additional way and definitely this is helping one of the interesting new technologies so well the car does feel more agile than the predecessor generation due to all the new technology and the suspension it doesn't feel too big it is a full-size suv it gives you this feeling but of course here in texas we also have those very big roads here again the augmented reality very interesting to see First roundabout, I'm at the moment, let's see, in the normal comfort mode. And in the comfort and in the so-called curve mode, which we'll soon show you, this e-active body control and new suspension, no turn right. Okay. So, that's always good to have the acoustic command, especially if you are um, talking while driving and that might happen that you talk to your co-driver for example also interesting to see the front camera then active always really interesting so you have to get um, used to this full pack of technology for sure but this is then now really helpful i think i have to go here on the interstate yeah so then we can drive also a little bit faster and here with the comfort mode uh, the suspension is basically scanning the road ahead and then deciding what it's going to do. Also in this curve mode, not in the other modes. Oh, those trucks are going quite fast here. So, always a little bit confusing with those very zoomed in, so to say, mirrors in the US. I like them more in the in the EU where we have a more realistic mirror image in the side mirror for sure. 
So this comfort setting here is definitely very comfortable. You know, we have the air suspension plus this hydro, uh, hydro pneumatic suspension. So it really is like a flying carpet on the road. It's also softer than, for example, the BMW X5. Here you still feel it is an air suspension. In the comfort mode, the steering is a little bit loose here in the small angles. That is, well, for example, better with the BMW X5 or with the um, Porsche Cayenne. Um, so here I would like to have some more feeling in the very small angle areas. As soon as you steer a little bit more, then the feeling comes to you. Um, but definitely, you can also shake up the car a little bit. That's also speaking for the rather soft setup of the suspension. Now 60 miles an hour, so that's 100 kilometers. And we can also test the assistance systems. Full packed here this week, and I really have to get used to this huge head-up display. This is almost taking half of the road. And those assistance systems are working really flawless here. At the moment, I'm basically doing nothing with accelerating or braking. The distance to the car in front of me is being kept. I would love to turn up the music volume here once more again. I told you earlier, the sound system is really superb. Interesting is that we have some more driving modes here for sure. Sport mode, for example, the gears are turned up higher. Um, that's more something for a dynamic driving part. And also this curve mode I've been talking about because in this curve mode the car is leaning inside the corner. That doesn't play a role here for the motorway, you don't feel it, but as soon as you have more corners, then it really is a lot of fun. Even in the city, uh, it somehow makes sense for sure. I can also show you that with another la lane change here, for example. Blind spot monitor, there's a red triangle is appearing in the side mirror. This is, of course, a very helpful one. So if I just do a lane change here, it's like, it's incredible. The car is really leaning in the corner again. And this is even fun at the motorway. And it also reduces the G-forces, for example, that are applied to poor co-drivers. Oh, and we drive so fast. <laughs> well, and I mean, maybe even making more sense here for the motorway is the eco mode. So there the throttle input is being reduced. The fuel economy should be better then. And we'll keep on driving just for a second to give you a low fuel consumption, which is possible when we're just more at steady speed. So I did some city driving now and now some highway driving at steady speed. This steady speed driving is always the best to keep the low consumption. So let the next truck pass, then you can see the blind spot the monitor once more. There's a red triangle. And when I try to set the turning indicator right now, this is also flashing then the red triangle and you also heard the sound. So the car is actively warning me. So what I found a little bit better with the previous generations was that at the left side here of the steering, you could easily deactivate all of the assistance systems if you, you know, not really keen on one or one or two of those. That's not possible here. So they have removed the buttons and also regulations nowadays tell the manufacturers to basically have all the assistance systems activated so that they pass the crash safety tests and so on. So here you can check out the digital instruments, then go to the assistance systems. Of course, not really recommended to do that while driving and then you can, you know, change them around a little bit. But that's again also um, a little bit complicated. So um, I would rather not do that. So here, for example, you can see then the, the distance to the car in front of me and you can also set it here at the steering wheel at the left side if the distance shall be increased or reduced. Definitely a very calm ride. I mean, we're in the full-size SUV and it's really silent, so I don't have to raise my voice that much. It's super comfortable, so suspension-wise, I mean, this e-active body control is cool for off-roading, for sure, and this curve function it's technology highlight for sure, but if you want to spend a little bit less money and just go with the air suspension, you'll also be just fine. Then you also have this smooth carpet ride. And that's what I expect from an air suspension. If I want an air suspension, 
I want that very smooth and soft ride. I don't want that super sporty stiff ride. Then I can go for another suspension, you know? That's how I think about air suspensions. What do you think about it? Then tell me in the comments, please. So this is really cool. And I have to say, when I go for the full set SUV, I also want that comfortable ride. So I think this one is now my favorite ride as for the full-size comfortable SUVs. And seating is also upright and really just pleasant. And I could very well imagine just, even if it's quite boring now, just to go with, with you know, 60 miles an hour and just straight. Yes, it's boring, but it's also super comfortable in this vehicle. So um, definitely among the best I have um, driven as for the comfort. What's Holger's verdict for today? Sums up for the car. He's not sleeping yet, but I think he, it's still more. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, when, when I'm also you know, talking in ASMR way and um, we have a very comfortable car and then I look around after 10, 10 minutes like, <laughs> but, oh, the car must be good. <laughs> don't believe him, don't believe him. <laughs> yeah, Okay, so you see, we are having fun. We are really relaxed, although we also had, you know, a long, long flight. Um, from Germany and stuff that's of course always uh, quite stressful then but um, we really enjoy driving here in the US of course to deliver you the most early car reviews always so this is definitely a super great performing highway vehicle no doubt about that so let's go back to this trip meter and so after cruising now a little bit it have some city driving in the mix we're now approaching about 23 mpg that's about 10 liters and one kilometers and is okay considering the size of the vehicle six cylinder here three liter of displacement 367 horsepower with this eq boost or EQ power so to say so this is the mild hybrid system let me also give you some info about that so when I'm for example accelerating really hard then this is giving me some additional boost however when I'm for example now going down just a little bit or when I apply the brakes then you see it here it says charge and this digital instrument is then running full so it's recuperating in this bigger battery in this 48 volt board that bigger battery which is for example used for this curve tilting system so so many technology highlights in this vehicle that they need this 48 volt board net to supply it everything so because you need a lot of electric power for that for sure and it's also supposed to bring the consumption down just a little bit mm, but however always when I tested those systems they didn't have the biggest effect yes you can have some recuperation then again the weight is a little bit higher maybe mm, on paper it brings down the consumption pretty much but in reality it doesn't have the biggest effect of all so but definitely already some very useful information here also from city and highway driving really cool by the way there's also this active steering system available um, so it is basically keeping um, the car in lane but you should not do that you should always keep your hands at the steering wheel so if I keep put my hands off the steering wheel the car is also telling me oh, don't do that and then is shutting off the system so um, but it's not really um, intrusive you know that was also a problem in the X5 so when we were get, getting um, closer to the sides it was like overreacting maybe we can induce that here now on purpose and also test that if that is any better here so let's just pretend I would be you know tired a little bit and then getting off the lane here that was quite okay that was okay and interesting by the way that um, the X5 and especially BMW in general and also some other manufacturers they are doing that with active steering here interestingly and we have experienced that with other Mercedes models they do that with braking so in this moment for example I was going off to the right side and then there was some torque adjustment with the brakes that the left wheels were a little bit slower than the car was, of course turning to the, to the left again very interesting um, especially in the C-Class this system was 
Well, it's always scary when you're in a car and then the truck appears next to you that is even bigger than you. So, <laughs> welcome to America. What the? <laughs> oh, I so would love to have like a, like a McLaren or something now and do this, you know, movie style like going just under, under the truck, you know, you know those, those movie scenes? That would be amazing, right? Was it from Bandit as well, I think? <laughs> Bandit movie, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Burt Reynolds? Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. But I think I can't do that with a GLE. That Maybe we would have a GLE convertible after that. <laughs> we don't want to have that. Well, Mercedes doesn't want to have that. I think GLE convertible would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Yeah. So back to those, um, you know, running off the lane and stuff. So in the in the C class, for example, and also in the A class, this system with getting off the the route was super aggressive, and you were coming a little bit close to the lane, and then it's like <gasps> was counter um, reacting with the braking uh, maneuver. But here, obviously, did some more fine tuning, and this is really okay. You know, you're being kept in the lane, but without you know being super surprised or the system being too aggressive. So good that they also have um, you know some development there in, in this case really like that so i think those were the aspects here from the highway driving and some countryside driving also here to enjoy the scenic route at the guadalupe river near san antonio and with cruising by the way i could bring the car to 26 mpg that would be nine liters or more kilometers that's pretty decent considering the size and the weight of course more than two tons of the car so that's really cool but of course more realistic when you have some more some awesome acceleration in it nine liters or 23 mpg um, is more realistic for sure so this curve function i just want to show you that once more because we can here now curve left and right um, this is really interesting. I'm not sure how you can really see it on the camera, but it's always that when I go to, for example, to the left, the left front dives in and to the right, then the right front dives in. That is really interesting. At some point, I think it would even pay off to show that on a racetrack. I think that you can really see that. But of course, you've also seen the exterior shots where the suspension dived in, and that's the same that is basically happening. So when you're driving slowly, it doesn't make such a difference. The faster you go, the more difference it makes. And probably even also in the city. Again, I can just stress how relaxing it is to drive the car. And although it is big, now for example, you know, when you're having also up and down, then the next corner, then the anti-curve or anti-tilt function makes sense. And the car also doesn't need some more other assistance systems then because this um, active suspension basically handles it all and that's also the reason why well that's a big bird why they did not go for the um, for the rear axle steering for example they said that's really enough to make the car uh, agile and indeed i do not miss the rear axle steering here it would be quite cool to reduce the turning circle you know as as in the new Touareg or in the KN or in the X5 but then again, this system here has um, definitely other advantages and is also superior in, in other ways then, definitely. The engine, by the way, you can hardly hear it, especially when you're just rolling. But when you're driving very slow, whoa, oh. Oh, that animal was already dead, too bad. It's always painful to see road kills, really painful. So try to avoid them as much as possible. So when you drift very slightly on the throttle, not sure if you can hear this, it's like this. You hear something going on the engine, but I think it, you just hear that because it's so silent in all other surroundings that you can hear those very, very minor sounds. Of course, if you go to the sport mode, then you hear more of the engine, or here for example in the sport plus even, then you can hear something more, you know, like gears are turned up higher as well. 
in the RPMs, but still it's very subtle. So they try really to keep a low noise volume. The sport mode is really more that you, for example, have a little bit stiffer suspension, so I have a little stiffer steering now, and there's also more throttle input, and the suspension gives me more feedback. It does not dive into the corners now, as with the curved mode, but it's stiffer in general. So you can argue then which is sportier. The curve mode definitely is somehow more fun because it's for, for sure just more special. Here for example now so there's a corner. I go back to the curve mode. It works instantaneously. Car dives back in. That's pretty cool. Always nice to cross the river here again. So very nice and scenic drive. The only thing that's too bad when you're not driving in Germany, you cannot drive that fast. So the speed limits here are very strict. So you can't, um, you know, in Germany, such a route like this here would be uh, 60 miles speed limit, 100 kilometers. Here is the half, 30 miles. So, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> for sure, better to keep uh, to keep people safe. That's that's pretty clear. So uh, we'll, of course, at the later stage, also do a German Autobahn test with this vehicle, where then it's also something more about the acceleration of the engine and also how it handles at higher speeds. Um, but I think it's definitely good to have both because, especially our American viewers, they will more have situations like those and also all the cruising features play a bigger role than you know, all the, all the performance features, for example. We're now approaching a red traffic light and we can hopefully do some more acceleration, for example. Now I have, by the way, um, GPS all over the place, really. I also have it in the middle of the digital instruments as well. So that's just for going left, but we want to go straight. <sighs> Silence. You hear nothing from the exterior. It's really interesting. So let's go back to the Sport Plus mode again. And now we can drive 45 and I'll just drop back just a little bit in speed that we can really accelerate. I can also show you that. So now it's 45 in speed limit. We just pass this house. So and now I'll just stop just a little bit and hammer the throttle from, from zero. Let's see. That's already 50 mph, so pretty impressive. And that was also a, a nice sound, you know, not too, too ups, you know, not too distracting or something, not too loud. Really nice six cylinder sound. Of course, you have more performance, and we go for the V8 option later. 5.7 seconds to 60 miles or 100 kilometers an hour. We could not really test it here because the speed limit is 45 but still very decent in the acceleration now we can also go a little bit faster here in the sport plus mode or in the sport mode stiffer from the feedback definitely now it's also a little bit better than with the that zone in the center but still there's not too much reaction in the first few degrees here you can see it would like to have that a little bit more but still, even if you're in a Sport or Sport Plus mode, the suspension remains comfortable enough. Yes, it is stiffer. And when you're going over some potholes or something, you feel it more. But it still remains comfortable, suitable. Let's go back to the curve mode once more. You know, when, when at higher speed, it has an even bigger effect, for sure. For example, let's, let's get here now just to show you that. Or maybe just like a, do a U-turn here. It's really interesting how the suspension dives and wow. It feels incredible. Really feels incredible. Now stop sign. It's really a lot of fun to drive the car, although it's a big and heavy car. We had this curve function in the S-Class Coupé a couple of years back, but it hasn't been implemented in that way in an SUV for sure. So what do you think?
And now to our conclusion for today. Here you can again very well see the difference to the Diamond Pin AMG grill here in the front and the normal front grill. Well, the general exterior is not a revolution, rather an evolution. And even a little bit bigger the car, once again, if you think about the original ML, for example, is the size of a today's GLC. So generation by generation, the vehicle has grown. On the interior then, of course, have more room and fully digitalized. So it's a sensual design, but at the same time, really high tech, also with a good voice command activation. Then technology wise, of course, the highlight is the new suspension. It's not really a must have, but it is for sure one of the technology highlights and also ahead of the competition in this case. Looking forward also to the special off-road features, which we hopefully can test in a hard off-road test. This will be very exciting, I can promise you. But in general, also for road driving, I mean, the air suspension is of course cool. If you spend so much money then for this e-active body control, that's another thing because, I mean, starting at the 66,000 66, with a normal diesel in Germany, for example, and going more expensive towards 80,000 for the bigger petrol engine, more equipment. And as the cars are here today, of course, more than 100,000 euros or dollars. That's quite, again, very expensive, but the competition is not really cheaper. To me, it's the most comfortable ride in the competition overall on the market here with the full-size SUV segment. Others, maybe like the Porsche Cayenne or the BMW X5, are sportier, but this one here, for me, the comfort king. What do you think? Tell me in your comments.